Okay, today is April 6, 2021. My name is Shamaya. I'm a volunteer with the Hanford branch of the Kings County Library Veterans History Project. Would you please state your full name? Yes, Judith Marlissa Jenkins. Well, nice to meet you, Ms. Jenkins. Thank, Thank you for being here. Thank you. So where are you from originally? Uh, Southampton, Long Island, New York. Wow, that was not full. Yes. <laughs> are your parents still with us? No, they've already gone on with Glory. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Have you any siblings? Uh, yes, I do. I have a brother who lives here in Hanford, um, Stone's Throw Away. And I had two sisters, uh, but they've already they passed already. Well, again, sorry to hear that. How old is your brother? My brother is 59. Okay, so he's older or younger than you? He's younger. He's younger? Mm -hmm. <laughs> baby brother? Yeah, my baby brother. Was he in the service or were you Yes, sisters? he was. He was in the Marines for about six years. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Were you, did your sister serve as well? No, neither one of my sisters served. My brother did avionics. He did avionics. He fixed radio equipment or something. Oh, neat. Okay. And what did you do in the... I was a security um, yeoman or slash secretary. So I helped people um, check in and check out with the um, paperwork and, and equipment for deployment. Okay. And which service were you in? On, on Navy. Um, USNR, Reserve Program. Okay, how long did you serve for? Uh, 20 years. Wow, nice. So you retired out then? Yes, I am. Nice, very cool. What did you do before serving? Um, I worked at um, Federal Bureau of Investigation in Washington, D.C. Wow, that is impressive. How old were you when you went in? 18. Oh my gosh, you were a baby. Yes, I was. So you went right out of high school then? Yes, I did. Wow. Yes, I did. And uh, it's been um, a learning experience, you know. It laid the groundwork for me to, I think, look at things a little differently as a young adult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was that? So which, which time period did you serve in? Like what year? Oh, I believe it's uh, March 17th of 1984 to March 17th of 2004. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What was it? Um, as a young woman going into the military, what, what was that experience like for you? Well, um, it was interesting because there's a little story behind that. Um, <laughs> me and two other ladies that I knew um, kind of did a toss up and we took the test and I said, well, who's gonna pass the test? Yeah. And uh, me and another girlfriend another, um, decided to go in, that we passed the test and we decided to go in, but he said, well, we're going to stay in for our initial contract and then we're going to get out. Mm -hmm. So it was like a joke in a sense <laughs> to join because nobody knew if we were going to qualify and we did. Okay. Was that the ASVAP test? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, right. So it was kind of like, well, let's take this test and see what we qualify for. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and when we qualified, uh, I was just shocked. So it was, uh, it was me and um, uh, Dorio and um, Lois. Okay. All three of us did. Those are high school friends? No, these are lifers, lifer friends. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, so. I met them while I was working at FBI. Okay, wow. So Dang. it was just a joke, but <laughs> and anyhow, but it was a good it was a good decision. It was a very good decision. Nice. And what was it about the Navy that made you pick the Navy? Well, when I took the ASVAB test, um, I also tried to take the test for the Air Force. Mm, okay. And I qualified to go in the Air Force too, but at the time, the only thing I could qualify for was cargo shipping. I wasn't oh. too excited about that, but um, the Navy had an opening uh, to, uh, for the enlisted side to be um, a secretary, a yeoman. Oh, okay. And um, since I worked on the air side of the base, I could be security. So oh, okay. that was kind of like the same thing that I did at FBI, so I, I kind of enjoyed doing that. Okay, very cool. Nice. What was that boot camp experience like in the 80s? Well, um, it was different for me because I came in a program that was called, as, um, that was called, um, um, well, let me explain the program first. The program is for, um, it's, ACP, I think it was, which they don't have anymore. Hmm. It's like the SAM program, C and Marinette. They don't have that one anymore. Oh. But it was an abbreviated program. You came in on your life experiences. So you didn't have to go in and get your like green stripes first. So it was like um, a short-term 
uh, training training thing. We went to a knife and fork school, if you understand what I'm saying. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. it was down in New Orleans. You went down there and yeah. um, they, they explained the Navy way of life, military. We had their instructors. We had drilling and uh -huh. drilling and drilling. Um, yeah, so it was like that, but it was abbreviated. Oh, how interesting. So currently the Navy's boot camp is, a, is two months. Right. So how long was your program? Um, I would just say um, a month or six weeks. Oh my God! It was very, like I said, it was very. Everything was crammed. Yeah. I mean, the books, everything was literally crammed. So it was, wow. it was a learning curve. But uh, if you hung with it, it was pretty. It was pretty good. You met a lot of people, yeah. and um, it just it's just a short indoctrination into what you would normally get in, in your basic boot camp. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. And so by drilling, you mean without PT or with PT and marching, oh, okay. and marching and marching. Yes. 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 Lots of marching. <laughs> Do you remember what any of your drill instructors or anything well, were like? Yes, I, I'll, I'll say we had um, we had one senior chief, and um, he was he was great. He's very tough, but he was he was on the mark. And I remember we were out drilling one day around the base, and um, this lady was behind me, and we were supposed to corner column left. And I stepped a little bit off. You know, when you step off, wrong, everybody gets. Yeah. And there was a bee on my back. And she knows I'm allergic to bees. And you know, you can't talk, so she stepped up and slapped my back. <laughs> so I didn't know what was going on, so I turned around and slapped the heck out of her. So we, her company hold. We were called forward. I had to drop. Oh my! I had God. to drop, and the girl said it was her fault because she had a bee, and nobody knew I was allergic to it. So she just was trying to kill it, but she we disrupted, and so I had to pay for it. Wow! But yeah, yeah, that's um. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> but was that your normal reaction to it? To hit people when they hit you? <laughs> no, but she hit me so hard because she's trying to kill the bee. Yeah. And all I didn't know, though, I know she hit me, so I turn around and like, okay, because we're going down, you know. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> and when I heard company hold, I'm like, oh crap, we're getting it, and it was me. Oh my god. You know, because I shouldn't have done. I should have just kept going, but I, I caused my company to have repercussions because of that. Oh, right. So, I mean, you didn't know. No, I didn't. Turns out you're trying to save your life. And right, <laughs> right. I learned that there's a right way, there's a wrong way, and there's a Navy way. Oh, that is very true. So. That is, that is quite true. So you had to go, was there a barracks or something for you? Yeah, all? actually we stayed in barracks down in, um, um, they call it NOLA then. I don't know if it's still there. It was oh, not too okay. far from Bell Chase. I think that was across the river. Huh. Um, very small, very small. It's, I'll say, the size of um, the Navy base in D.C., the Navy Yard. It's very small, very compact, and yes, we did. We had a quad. Okay. Excuse me, it was all women, but... Okay. It, was, your, was your training, was that just all female, or was it mixed? No, it, it was mixed, mostly female, though. Oh, okay. Mostly female. So I don't know how they... Fix that. I think it's from certain areas, like the north, northeast region or something. They had us small groups, and we stayed because the base was small, and the training was compact. So, the small the classes were small. The okay. grouping was small. Wow. Okay. So from there, because you said that training was in New Orleans. Yes. So then, from there, then did you have to apply for orders, or were you trained specifically to go fill that spot in DC? No, I had um, I had orders, and my orders were to go to Andrews Air Force Base, which was my home command. Oh, okay. That, that's in Camp Springs, Maryland, and I worked in the um, admin office in the Reserve Intelligence Community. Oh, okay. So I was a secretary there, and I worked under uh, the CO as one of the group of secretaries there in his command oh, until okay. I got reassigned to Suitland. To where? Suitland Nimic Center, N M I C Nimic. Navy Military Intelligence Command. Oh, okay, where was that? Uh, that's in Suitland, which was also in the D.C. area. I say it's about uh, 20 minutes oh, from Andrews. Oh, okay. So for your whole 20 years, was it just those two spots, or did you? I worked mostly in those two areas, yes. But then I had times where I had to work at Crystal City, at DPMO, and I had to work also at uh, the Pentagon J2 for watch standing. 
Wow, it's like kind of on like very, very busy. Yeah. Right? I did watch standing, which you know is like 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Yeah. But um, I got to learn a lot about disciplining and staying focused. Oh, because I had okay. to handle I had to handle correspondence, mail shoot, make sure the things got to the admiral on time when he was doing his briefing. So oh, it was wow. it was a lot of running around, but you had to stay on top of things. Yeah. I mean on top. You can't let anything slip. The wrong classified mail gets the wrong people. So, um, oh yeah, that's yeah. I had to do that by myself. So, um, but it was it, it was a good experience because you learn, like I said, the discipline and the importance of what you're doing, and who who you're serving. You know, yeah. you're serving a country, but you know you're serving also your leader, which is you know the admiral, the CEO. Yeah. So it was um, it was I I feel that it was impacted me because it helped me round myself out. Okay. As understanding the chain of the command and what I was doing impacted on what they do, how they present things right. at their meetings and briefings, you know. Yeah, that must have been, like that is a unique spot to be in where you, it, your, your role in it is very tangible. Mm -hmm. So you know the importance of your role and you can, you can live up to that, I guess. It's mm -hmm. just a challenge to, okay, I need to stay on top of this because what I do or what I don't do has a very visible effect on right. somebody else. Right. Yeah. Dang. Cause it, so you were a reservist the whole time. I was reservist the whole time. So you had another full-time job. Yes, I did. I still okay. worked at the FBI. Okay. So you started working at the FBI when you were very young. Yes, I did. How did you get into that? <laughs> That's another day. No. Um, <laughs> my girlfriend and I were uh, school buddies in Kansas City, Missouri, when I went to school out there. And what happens is at the end of our training, um, we had recruiters come out for uh, job applications who was interested. And the CIA was out there as well as the FBI. Wow. Well, I took this test for CIA, but I got sick. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the flu or something. So um, I, I had also taken at FBI because I figured we'll toss up either one, they're both government. And so my girlfriend said we both made it for the FBI. So once we left there, we went back to our respective home. She's from uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I was from New York. Then we came, she came in first, I think, because you have the background investigation, you know, and that takes a while, uh, depending on how much that you've done between graduating and whatever. Yeah. So we both ended up uh, working there. Okay. And you did that for your whole career as well. Mostly, yes. Twenty-one wow. years, yeah. Oh, okay, 21 years. Mm -hmm. Wow, 20, you're just a government servant. Yes, <laughs> yes. Did you enjoy that kind of work? Like, the being affiliated with the government and being in that environment? Uh, I think my last assignment before I was recalled back after duty was um, um, UCR, which is Unified Crime Reporting. And what they, that group does is um, they contact local uh, police police force and um, agencies like that to get statistics on crime. You know, um, you have arson, you have homicides, and uh, things like that, and they tabulate it monthly. They send it us to us, FBI, and we have to put it in a database. Oh, so it's basically like accounting. Oh, okay. Okay, but you have to, to, uh, you have to be meticulous about your numbers because they have to, all reports have to balance because then they go into the statistics for crime in the U.S., which goes out across the country. Oh, okay, sure. So it's it's very meticulous. You can't talk in your group. You don't use oh, the phone. Yeah. You just punch. But I liked it because I took accounting in school, and so this is the kind of thing I like to do. That's oh, okay. So and that's very interesting that that both of your jobs in in the military mm -hmm. and then also with the FBI, I mean, they were somewhat similar. Yeah. Just like. Yeah kind of higher level, important, yes. admin kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. How was that, so your, what was your schedule like for the reserves? My schedule was that um, it was once a, excuse me, it was once a month on the weekends. Oh, okay. Uh, usually Saturday or Sunday. And um, once a year we had to go away on our, um, our, work thing, which is like two weeks. Okay, so that that system hasn't changed much in the last 30 years then. Right. Right, and, and so one weekend a month and two weeks a year? Two weeks a year, and 
Um, when I was coming through, they finally let people, um, they finally let soldiers go from the East Coast to the West Coast, because before you couldn't do it. Anytime you had AT, you had to do it in your region. That was the thing, but along the lines, uh, Navy had changed things so that you could switch back and forth. So that's when I f first came out to uh, the Navy Command Center that was under, uh, I think it's Treasure Island, which I, I don't think is defunct now, but wow. Treasure Island in uh, San Francisco, is it? Oh, wow. And okay. I worked for the legal attache office. And they had a Commodores back then. This is how old. Wow, yeah. So I worked for a Commodore out there in the legal attache office and it was very good. It was very, um, he was, um, he was as tough as they come. I mean, he expected excellence, nothing less. But he was very fair. Mm -hmm. He was very fair. And usually, um, maybe we can have part like of a Friday off or something like that because he wanted you there on the weekends and he had special projects, oh, which wow. meant that you had to be there. But he was, I think, one of my toughest um, leaders. Okay. But he was very well respected in the community, in the reserve community, and in the Navy. Oh wow! So, so you you worked for him at I did part of that. Yeah, as a yeah. Okay, and why did yeah. you call it AT or something? Yeah, eight, I think it's ATP. I think that's what it was for your two weeks. Oh. Okay. And the longer that you're in, you have like seniority, so sometimes you could pick what you want. This, I guess the active duty called dream sheet. Oh, okay. You yeah. would go to the office on the base, and they have a uh, couple of yeomans in there. And what, what it is is that you could put in for something that you might like. It depends on how many people before you, you know, how, how needed it is. But I got some pretty good um, work assignments for, for my two weeks doing that. Because if, if you're there, it's, it's, it's like a knee. The military has a knee. They need a body. And oh, the thing okay. is, how soon can they put you in, plug you in? Oh, but well, by rule, it was only for two weeks. Oh, how interesting. Do you have that option to extend if you wanted to extend? Or? If the CO wants you to. When I was on assignment yeah. for in Italy, um, I was there for two weeks and the CO wanted me to stay extra because of the assignments that were going on. Mm -hmm. And I worked in a shop where they were mostly male, um, male, uh, male counterparts. Mm -hmm. And he needed me to get a lot of the uh, information for evaluations for the um, for the enlisted together, and they were a lot. And oh, I was okay. primarily doing that for him. And when I was leaving, there was going to be like a hole because I was filling in a hole for somebody else. So uh, they put in a request for orders for my extension, and my command didn't extend it. They said, "No, we need her here." So. Oh wow! Yeah. Were you a little disappointed by that? Well, in a way, yes, I was because, yes. um, like I said, it was a lot of work. But my experience is with the Navy, they train you. They train you for what they want. They have a need. You're there for the need. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to up to it? So to me, it was always a challenge. Yeah. You know, I can do this, or I think I can do this. So um, I was always there for the challenge. And, and that's what helped me grow a lot as a, as a young person so. because um, you can't be lazy. <laughs> you gotta grow. So, yeah. Yes, and you know, and I imagine too in the reserves, it's just, it's, I would say more of a challenge probably than full-time active duty mm -hmm. that, you know, you have your, your regular full-time life mm -hmm. with your regular job, mm -hmm. and then once a week or once a month, and then two weeks a year, you have to, you switch, yeah. you do a little role switch, and then you have to go, you're in a new environment, yeah. and even though you're familiar, it's a little different, especially if you're changing positions or yes. going for a two-week assignment where you don't know anybody and yes. it's a new a new role and a new job that you're expected to do. Okay, I'd like to share this this little bit. Yes. Um, I had um, um, go to Campbelltown in Scotland and um, it was really strange because they're a little behind the times even on the military side. It's a small base and um, I went in to do fit reps, I mean, the, the officer evaluation oh, forms, okay, yeah. and um, the captain was sitting behind the desk, and he asked me to have a seat, and he says, are you ready? And there was this antiquated piece of machinery that they called a computer. <laughs> I mean, it was all in one, and the screen actually rolled like this, wow. and he goes, yo, man, aren't you ready to do the forms? And I said, sir, where's the button to turn it on? <laughs> And he goes, excuse me, I said, sir, I don't, I'm not familiar with this. They had cast off stuff, and they had this big printer. I don't know if you remember the Wangs back in the 80s. 
I mean, this thing took up like half the table. Wow. And he told me the only thing is you have to watch the table because it tends to move itself down, like what you call. So you had to watch the printer as you're printing. Oh yes. my gosh. Yes. Well, that, it would just work its way down the table. It was the big old daisy wheel printer, and that's all they had. Wow. So, and I just sat there and I wanted to cry. I'm like, how do I turn this on? I can't do this, you know. Oh my goodness. But uh, he expected me to, to just know. Wow. So, this yeah. is down to the fifth. This is like the this original. This is like, yeah, the original. Right. Made, so. right. So, but I, I figured it out because there's another chance for me to rise to the occasion. And I think that kind of, like, like we spoke earlier, it helps you to, to motivate you, which is, I think it's so important in life. If you don't have motivation, you can't get things done. Right. Started. It's either, you know, some situations, it's either um, sink or crash swim. And, yeah, sink or swim. Yeah. I would say crash or, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's either sink or swim. It's like, okay, well. Figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, so on that note, in your 20 years of service, in those kinds of roles, I mean, so you started in 1984. Yes. How much did technology change from 84 to 2004? Quite a bit. And as I loosely put, you had to roll with it. Yeah. Um, we had the, um, <laughs> we had a mimeograph machine. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it was like a, it looked like a big Xerox machine, but um, you could duplicate, you make your master template. A and you put that, a yes. okay. And you put it on a roller. And it had to be certain purple ink, and you had to be <laughs> careful not to put in too much because it would go over the sides or whatever. You put your template on the roller, there was wow. pins to hold it, and then you had to turn it. But you have to turn it in a certain way because you don't want to splash it, you don't want to put too much ink on your paper because then it would run. Oh my so you goodness. had to turn it. I had that. And another one we had was for, um, oh gosh, what do they call it? Um, when you send telegraphs, but it's by um, oh faxing. Okay. We had a, like a manual. This is also when I was in Scotland. You had to turn it manually. You had to put the thing on the plate and, and you had to crank it to make the contact for wow. the sheet. Oh so you had to do gosh. that. So I felt a lot of times like I was going back in time and I said, they didn't tell me that before I went on signed I was going on duty. So they had one of those. <laughs> they had one of those. Wow. So yes, um, it, technology has made a lot of things for what you're doing now in the military a lot easier. Yes, I'm, I mean, as a millennial, I didn't even know those things existed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did. <laughs> They did. It was interesting. But oh it, my they goodness! Did, so I bet. Did that? Um, was it pretty different too? Because it seems like you went to a couple different countries. Yeah. So most of these experiences with the um, the older equipment was in Scotland, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you're like, whoa, what is this? How do I? It's, it was a very small command. Yes. And like I said, they did not get a maximum turnover, or if they did, what happens is it was hard, hard to backfill. So I was a backfill at this particular period. Okay. And um, I want to say the CBs, it's not the CBs. Uh, what are the ones that go off that you don't, uh, SEAL Team. Mm. It was a SEAL Team base. Oh, wow. So okay. they weren't there at the time, they were often deployed. Yeah. But we had to, you know, there's always paperwork when people leave and whatever. And since that's what I do, they wanted me to go over there and get the paperwork done on this antiquated stuff. Wow. So. Oh, how funny. Um, so, in your 20 years, like where where all did you go? So you were primarily stationed in the D.C. area. Yes. So where else did you get to go? Um, well, let's see. Uh, not a whole lot of areas. I, like I said, I went to the Pentagon. I went to Crystal City, which is just outside of D.C., uh, more on the Virginia side. Um, the Pentagon, I went to Italy. I went to um, Scotland, and then, uh, I think that's about it. I was gonna, I did sign up to go to Sink and Snap Europe, over there in England, but the thing about it is I got trumped out, you know, seniority persist. And I was supposed to go to um, Japan but at the time, um, I was too far along in my pregnancy. You know, if you are so many weeks, you oh, can't fly. Okay. So my captain wanted to go. So she, we switched spots. She went, and I took her, what she was supposed to do there. 
for the spot, not her job, her, the spot. Mm -hmm. So I stayed at Suitland because I was too far off. But I wanted to go. Oh, I bet. Okay. That was going to be my last one. Oh, okay. The before so, you retired or before? Yeah. 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 Oh, so, wow. But um, I think that I had some good opportunities for limited travel. Yeah. And I think it's a it's a uh, um, an afforded way that the Navy helps you. Yes, that your, yes, your life is on the line. But mm -hmm. look what they afford you: education. Oh yeah. You can work different areas. The opportunity for growth and and learning how to work with other people and stuff is just unlimited. Oh, absolutely. It absolutely is. Gives you some unique opportunities yes. that you would never experience. Yes, and you never lose together. it. You never lose it. And and I feel now that I've been out 17 years, I still feel that um, some of the things that I've learned has really helped me even in my civilian career. Absolutely. So. What did you do once you got out? Um, well, I was still employed. I, oh, well, I kind of do that. <laughs> I was still employed with the government, but then I worked for... Uh, another government agency over in Bowling Air Force Base, and that was, um, um, you give me a minute. <laughs> but I, I worked for them, and what happened is, is that I, um, I was filling an active duty spot, and I was the colonel's secretary when I was oh, over there. Okay. My girlfriend was supposed to go, and she couldn't, she, because she accepted another assignment, but she suggested to him that I'd be willing to come. And see, that was the beautiful thing about being in the uh, yoga community. When they have opportunities that come up, you know, the CEO say, well, I'm looking for so-and-so. And they say, well, I know somebody who can leave right now, and they, whatever. So we kind of worked like in a yeah. pat on the back or buddy system, which right mm -hmm. now I understand it's frowned on. You don't do that anymore. But back then, it worked yeah. because um, to me, when I worked um, on the reserve side, when, when I didn't work, I'm sorry, when I, after I just came back and I didn't work at FBI anymore, there was a, a quiet time. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is I wasn't hooked up with the government. I worked to, um, to um, corporate agencies, uh, KJAX and another agency, um, and I worked for them, and I did the same thing, like accounting. And I worked for them for a little while, and then I went back active duty, and when I did go back act active duty, I went and worked at the archives over in uh, Rockville, Maryland. And what we did was we looked up uh, on files that had to do with um, some of our leaders, like the president and whatever. So I can't tell you what's in <laughs> technically, but that was very that was very good because um, you got to know a lot of stuff about our our, our military. I mean, our military leaders, yeah. and that you don't normally would find out on the street or CNN wow. and stuff. So, of course, that was classified, but we had a small group, and um, the Navy C, C team worked behind us, and um, I worked at ONI 0166, so we worked teams in different clearances. I had a top secret clearance, and they had just a secret. So they worked on one side of the building, we worked on the other side. Oh, wow. But at, that, was, uh, that, was very, that was very interesting, and it was a lot of work. A lot of work. You were by yourself and you were in files. Oh my goodness. And the building is so big, it's just like you wouldn't see anybody. You'd just be in your, what you call it, but you can't goof off or anything like that. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. I run it through so many files, I had so much information, historical files, yeah. that are really, really um, interesting to read. And But um, I got caught one time reading a file because it was so interesting. And my CEO said, you know, not authorized to read what you call it. You're just supposed to go through it. Because we're supposed to scan, break down things, and uh, have it ready for storage. They had to be stored certain. Oh, my goodness. But um, some of those things were just really interesting. Wow. So you have this top secret clearance, and yeah. your whole job is just to go and organize stuff, but you're not allowed to read it? Right. Well, oh. we can insofar as, as the yeah. job was limited to, mm, you know. Sure put in certain classifications, where they'd be stored, who's got access to them and stuff, but no, we couldn't read any, we couldn't read, we couldn't get into it, oh but it was, goodness. it would be nice if we could. Wow, did you get any kind of like write-ups for that or anything, or was it just a discussion, hey, Miss Jenkins, you're not allowed to do that? Um, no, it was just, it was just short. Just that, just a short, well yeah. that's good, that's good. Were you, when you got to visit any places like California or 
when you went to Scotland or mm -hmm. Italy, did you have any free time or was it just work the whole Limited. Time? Limited. Mostly it was work. Um, I did get to go uh, see some of the castles down in Italy. Um, mm -hmm. The senior chief that uh, the team that I was in, that I was assigned to, he took a group of us, um, and we got to go to downtown um, Italy. Um, I say downtown Italy. I'm trying to think of where we were. Italy. <laughs> Sorry, but um, we got to eat really good food. You know, um, the pizzas made down there and stuff, and the culture was very different. Very different. Uh, we got to. Um, see downtown Rome. Oh, neat. Yeah, um, the water fountain that they show in the movies and oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't get to do a whole lot. Okay. Because, like I said, it was very heavy. They were back low. Right, and I imagine if you're going for two weeks and you're expected to do a job, and I mean, really, you're, as a reservist, you're there to fill a hole. Yes. So I would imagine that. Yeah, it, and it they were, um, takes a they had. Uh, I don't know, it seems like when you go overseas, they always seem to have a backlog of work, and I'm like, who's always doing the work? But and anyhow, <laughs> we got the opportunity to travel, so. Yeah, right, it's still, still a great opportunity. Did you have a family at that time? Like, when you were when you were on your travels, did you have a family? I'll say, I'll say yes, in the early part, um, <laughs> I'll say in the 90s, is when I met my husband, um, I met him before I went, and I went to Italy, and he called me every day, I don't even know how much he spent to this day, you know. But we talked every day, and that was nice. And um, we came back, got married, and yeah. So, but my, um, I tried to limit it once I had kids to just doing base assignments and stuff. So okay. I didn't yeah. How how long had you served before you had your first child? Um, from eighty-five to ninety-one. So. Oh, okay, from eighty-five to ninety-one. Right. Okay. So, and then from that till the end, and and I got out a little early. Well, I'll say a little early. I got out before they tried to snatch me and send me to um, another duty site because my mom was terminally ill and she was okay. dying. And it was at the time where I was getting ready to get out, and they were going to try to pull me back in and reactivate me. Oh. Okay. And so I asked for, you know, to be released so I yeah. could be with my mom. Absolutely. So. Was your mom there in that, was she still in New York or was she in No, she was in Virginia. She oh, was she in was Virginia. in Virginia. My mom okay. and dad lived in Virginia, yeah. Aww. How did your, your parents or your mom, how did, how did they react when you were 18 and you said, I'm going to join the Navy? Um, my mom didn't think it was a good idea. Yeah. My father, he thought I was kind of a little crazy. But um, he says, what do you want to do this for? This is what guys do. He said, why do you want to do this? And I said, I want an opportunity to better myself. Absolutely. Which is what I, you know, like now, I, I want an opportunity, it was there. And so when I went in, he, um, you know, he was like, okay, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, but my parents were supportive. After I started moving up in rank and stuff yeah. like that, they were more supportive of me. Oh, well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Did you feel like, oh, she, your brother is quite a bit younger than you? Yes. So, do you think that your service inspired his service? I think so. Yeah? Oh, that is really neat. Were you, are you close to him? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Aww. All right. What do you think was the most, as a young woman in the military, what was the most challenging thing for you? I think the most challenging thing for me in, as a young woman in the military was to understand the importance of what your position is, what your job is. You're part of a whole. Okay, you have a mission. Okay. Um, and it's not about duty, it's about the mission. And you don't do your job, you cause somebody else to not be able to do their job. So and it's important you take instruction, um, you listen clearly, and you keep your mind on your part as in the mission. I think that was the most important because I didn't understand about that <clears throat> before I went in. Mm -hmm. So it helped me to find teamwork, how to work as a team. Oh, okay. A team. Absolutely. Do you have any friends from that period that you recall? Um, I do, but I haven't talked to her in years. Oh, okay. So I've lost her number, but yeah. Um, Actually, she was the most inspiring person because she would get me um, really interesting AT 
uh, my active duty time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was the one who sent me to Italy. And the nicest thing about it is that when I got to Italy and stuff like that, I was supposed to have a sponsor who didn't show up. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. But once I got to my quarters, she called me and asked me, is everything okay? She actually followed up and called me, made sure I was okay. So, uh, Gertie Kelly is a very special woman, Aww. and she's a leader in her own right, and I highly respect her. Oh, very cool. But you, you said you were close for a time. We were close for a time, but yeah, yeah um, time goes on and don't always stay in contact with each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you have any specific memories about your time in the service? Yes, I think I had some really good leaders, and I'm not trying to put anybody on a high stand, but they showed me that um, they helped me grow. Mm -hmm. And I needed quite a bit of, of emotional growing at the point because I was thinking everything was, was about like me and, and kind of frivolous. Okay. They helped me grow up and understand that through the Navy's term, but you know, you have, you have potential, but you have to get there. Absolutely. Were you awarded any medals or citations while you were in? Um, yes, I did. Um, I think the first one that I got was the most important to me, the uh, service award, and um, the, I think that involves this, how many years you've been there, and um, the evaluations that you get each year and stuff like that. So I was very proud for that because I worked really hard for that, and I wanted to prove myself worthy of being part of their team and supporting the mission. Absolutely. Would you like to speak about any wounded or fallen comrades? No. Do you have any? Do you recall the day your service ended? Yes. Um, actually, that's kind of a little funny, but the day my service ended was that I had a lot of work to do, and me and uh, my um, senior chief were very close working team, okay? So she would put me in the captain's office, me and another person locked the door because we were doing fit I mean, you have to get those out. They have to be on time. They have to be accurate. So. Um, on that day, I was supposed to retire, and so I went out, nice luncheon, my, my girlfriend and her husband took me out. Um, and then I came back, and there was even more. What you call it? I said, I'm supposed to retire today. <laughs> so she's, when it was time to leave, 1630, I walked out, so she goes, um, what about those? And I said, bye. Oh my gosh, that's so I said, hilarious. I'm not, she, out, she offered to ask me to stay and finish those, and I said, no, I give my service to the country, I did my 20 years, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. What day, when was that? Um, um, that was, I think it was a Saturday afternoon in 2004. That was Saturday in March. And, um, yeah. But I would have stayed, but I had to go pick up my kids and all that. So, But I was trying to do the best as I can. See, one thing about the military, I'll say the Navy especially, Navy's old. They're based in tradition, you know. Yes. Um, and it's like I said, there's right way, wrong way, Navy way. I understood that real early in, in, in my career. But I followed that, and to me, that helped with understanding leadership and being responsible. They don't care whether you like somebody. somebody. They don't care if you like what you're doing. Absolutely. You do what you're told. Mm -hmm. So. And overall, do you think your military experience was a positive contribution to your life? I, I believe so. Yes. I believe so. I learned how to be more independent. I learned how to stop crying with that little voice. Why me? Why I gotta do this? <laughs> you know, I don't want to. I don't, don't want to do this. And, and look, I learned more discipline. And um, I think some of the people, even though I don't see them now, some of the comrades I work with. Um, since we're all on the same team, you know, Team Navy, woo, <laughs> that we, um, we all have the same understanding. And that's why I always like working with the military. It was DIA, I'm sorry, Defense Intelligence Agency. Oh, that was the other okay. one. Um, we know that we're all working for the same thing. So all the little petty differences that you go through in life, which now, you know, still goes through with stuff like that, it, it doesn't mean anything in the big picture. Mm -hmm. I learned to look at stuff in the big picture. So, um, I, I think I really I, I learned a lot to grow up in that way because I was all about duty and you know <laughs> silly stuff. I learned I learned a great deal of growing up and changing and being more responsible. Absolutely. So, Ms. Jenkins, um, future generations will likely see this interview. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would like them to know? Well, yes. I, I guess I'd like them to know if you are afforded an opportunity to join um, military. Every branch that you think that you would fit into, 
uh, Army, Navy, Air Corps, whatever, go forward and try. Because once you pass that ASVAB and you know what you can do, and they're willing to train you, and you get so many benefits through the military. Absolutely. So many. You get, you know, um, um, education, they feed you well, and you get opportunities to travel. And if you put forth effort, what you put forward, I always say what you put forward into it is what you're going to get out of it. Absolutely. And I think even in this day and age, even though what's going on with COVID and all that, I still think it's a, it's a great opportunity for our young people or people um, who maybe not are defined in life and don't know what they want to go to college or if they're going to Absolutely. go to college, whatever. Yeah. If you go this route, like I said, it's, it's a win-win situation. It really is. And that's coming from my experience. Absolutely. Is there anything else you'd like to add to this interview? Well, I'd, I'd like to say that um, I'm happy that, that um, for the people who can still choose to do this. Mm -hmm. And I understand sometimes, um, you know, when you, when you try out new things, you never know what is, what, what's going to end up with. But I think, and I tried to get both of my kids in, they went to a military academy, but um, unfortunately neither one did make it. But for those that can go through, I think it's a great experience. I think it's a great opportunity to learn, and it's a great um, opportunity to learn about yourself and oh, to, for growth, personal growth. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Ms. Jenkins, for being part of this interview. It was thank a pleasure you. speaking with you today. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to be here, and above all, thank you for serving this country. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, I didn't show the picture. Oh, shoot. No, it's okay. Oh, and I, wanted, so, okay. I wanted to show a picture of myself um, taken in 1986, and this is when um, I first was. Uh, I had first been in, in, in Navy, and of course, I'm, I'm a small size, but, uh, and the uniforms have changed very much since that time, but um, all of us got our uh, professional pictures taken and stuff, so I wanted to just sh share this with you. This is the only one that I have left of, of myself in my service days. Oh my gosh, how old are you? Um, I am 27 years old, <laughs> because when I came in an APG program, you could come in if you were... Uh, 26 between 26 and 27 so I came in and uh, that's my first picture that I have oh well it's beautiful thank you which which uniform is that oh this one is um, service dress blues okay this is the one I wore mostly when I was at the Pentagon because you had to dress up formally and um, the the uh, Navy Command Center they wanted you to wear skirts the skirts oh okay yeah skirts wow. and yeah. oh my goodness yeah and at one point, we had to wear gloves. Did gloves. you really? Yeah. Oh so, my gosh. Um, yeah, but it was it was it was nice, and and I I always enjoyed the the military uniform because um, I always thought we'd look neat and crisp. Yes. And yes, it does. Um, I like our uh, what I call the bucket hat, the bucket hat because it would <laughs> it would take off uh, um, add to the the uniform. My, my favorite uniform was the one that I wore in. Uh, when I went to Italy, Naples, um, we had the jeans, the chukka boots, uh, the chambray shirt, and um, the I call the canoe hat. We had a it kind of open to the side oh and it was gosh. straight forward and back. Was that the uh, dungarees? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> it was very much laid back compared to the service dress blues, but it still it had its place, and yes. um, it was very easy to work with, especially with something to you has to do that you would want to do if you were so stressed. Oh yes, I yeah. so. so. Well thank you so much for sharing. That was thank really you. neat.